I speak to you today in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. So every year at the end of Advent, St. Peter is sent to earth to do a, a tour of all of the shrines that are dedicated to one certain saint or another. Well, one day he was having a particularly delightful conversation with Jesus' mother, the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he decided that he would put in a request to visit all of the shrines that were dedicated to her. So off he goes on his tour where he has a wonderful time. He returned a few days before Christmas, ready to file his report, but first he decided to visit Mary. So, Mary, he said, you know, I had a great time visiting all your shrines. You know, the numbers are way up, more than any other saint. But one thing puzzles me. Every statue captures you looking really, really sad. Why is that? Did, did they get it right? Mary looked at Peter, sighed, and said, yes, they got it right. But, you know, I really don't want to tell you why I was sad. Peter replied, look, Mary, uh, you know, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but, but I'm a saint, you know. Uh, I, I can be pastoral. Please, unburden yourself. You, you can tell me. Mary held a long pause, uh, and after what seemed like an eternity, and, and well, come to think of it, it may have actually been one, right? <laughs> Sighed and said, well, you see, Peter, I really wanted a girl. <laughs> well, today, today is a wonderful, wonderful day. And that is because today we have a baptism, another baptism here at St. Barnabas. Yay, St. Barnabas. <laughs> Ivy Flanagan is here along with her parents and grandparents and godparents and friends and loved ones, and they are going to stand up here in just a little while and make some promises on behalf of Ivy as we welcome her into the church. And you see, and if that wasn't enough to be excited about, well, you see, today, today is the fourth Sunday in Advent. And that means that we are blessed to hear Mary's song. Mary's song, which is otherwise known as the Magnificat. Can we even have Advent without Mary's song, without the Magnificat? Has, has there ever been a piece of scripture that is more beloved than this? You know, there, there are so many beautiful pieces of artwork that are dedicated to the moment where Mary and Elizabeth meet and come together and, and the, the John the Baptist uh, in Elizabeth's womb leaps for joy. It's a beautiful, beautiful scene. If you haven't seen any of the artwork, I, I would uh, I just ask you to Google it uh, at some point today, and you'll be amazed at some of the beautiful things. You know, most of those are very, very peaceful. And I think that's because when we think of Mary, we, we often think of that, that meek and, and mild young girl who, after the angel informs her that she will give birth to the Savior, she replies, let it be. Let It Be, of course, is what inspired that, that beautiful Beatles song, if anyone's been watching the, uh, the documentary. But that's, that's a picture, that picture of saintly Mary, dressed in the blue veil, submissive. That's the one we have this time of year. You know, Mary doesn't even get any lines in the Christmas pageant. But then we see our reading today. Well, Mary goes to her relative, Elizabeth, who, who is considerably older, who is also pregnant. The baby in Elizabeth's womb is John the Baptist, and John leaps for joy, sensing the presence of Jesus. It's wonderful. Has there ever been, again, a, another piece of Scripture that's more beloved? And at the same time, has there ever been a piece of Scripture that's been more ignored? 
Because if you look, well, this isn't the meek and mild Mary that we, we find in our, Christian, or our Christmas pageants. You see, this right here, well, this is the original girl power anthem. It started the girl power movement, I like to think, which means it's the perfect piece of Scripture for Ivy's baptism. I hope y'all weren't hoping for a silent and submissive daughter. Because if today's gospel is any indicator of what's to come, well, Ivy is going to be a firecracker. Did you guys know that Mary's song is the largest set of words spoken by a woman in the New Testament? But why would I say that this is a piece of scripture that gets ignored right after saying that there are tons of uh, uh, paintings and sculptures that, that that are fashioned after it? My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. I mean, isn't that beautiful? See, but after that, it it, it kind of becomes, the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Because we kind of lose our focus, and we trail off, and we don't really read the rest But what's so revolutionary about all of that? Well, you see, it's the next part. Do we really want to see the proud scattered? Do we really want to pull the powerful down from their thrones? Are we really okay with filling up the hungry with good things and sending the rich away empty? Well, most times I will have to say that no, we are probably not. Because at least speaking for myself here, nine times out of ten, well, I'm the person they're talking about. I'm the proud that's going to be scattered. I'm the powerful. I'm the one that should be sent away empty. Did you guys know that Mary's song was actually banned in three different countries in recent history? All because those who were in power saw it as a threat. And they saw it as a threat because the people in the streets began to realize just what we are asking for here. The people in the streets began to realize that Mary's song is a song of revolution. That Mary's song is a song about change. The Mary song is a song about lifting up the lowly and tearing down the corrupt human empires of this world in favor of building the kingdom of God. Girl power. There couldn't be a more perfect scripture reading for baptizing a young lady than the one we have today. So Ian, Claire... Godparents, grandparents, friends, loved ones, church. Start getting ready now. Because if our gospel lesson today is any indication, you're going to have a kingdom-building, empire-wrecking, patriarchy-smashing, world-liberating revolutionary on your hands. And thanks be to God for that. Amen. Amen.